thank you for joining us in the first webinar of a special webinar series, Talk with the Expert. Each week, we're going to host a webinar in which industry experts will be invited to share their expertise and enlighten, us, enlighten all of us on a topic related to AI, coding, and education. This webinar series is a part of Kodeva 2020 AI, this year's biggest international AI and coding competition for kids that encourages them to channel their inner innovators and come up with creative solutions to real world problems by making AI projects using Pictoblogs, a graphical based programming platform for kids. The topic for today's webinar is the importance of artificial intelligence and coding for young minds of the 21st century. And to enlighten us on this topic, we have three very special guests with us tonight, uh, Mr. Yudhishthir Yadav, Dr. Manan Suri, and Mr. Pankaj Verma. I'd like to introduce everyone to all of our guests, Pandava. Mr. Yudhishthir Yadav heads the strategic initiatives for NASCOM Future Skills an online program that aims to reskill over 2 million professionals and potential employees and students in the new age technologies and equip them for jobs in the global technology world. Before joining the Future Skills team, he led NASCOM's IT-ITES Sector Skills Council initiatives for the Western region. He has at many states and assisted state and central agencies such as the Ministry of Education and Director of Technical and Higher Education in designing, development, and implementation of large as well as focused skill development schemes and programs. Prior to NASCOM, he was associated with InOpen Technologies, an IIT Bombay research spin-off as General Manager in Sales and Marketing. Together, the entire team impacted uh, more than 600,000 students in over 200 schools across India. Welcome to the webinar, sir. My pleasure to be part of this session. Uh, next. And I look forward to uh, speak to all the Thank students you. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next guest for tonight is Dr. Manan Suri. Uh, he is an associate professor and currently leads the NVM and Neuromorphic Hardware Research Group at IIT Delhi. He was selected by the renowned MIT Technology Review magazine as one of the world's top 35 innovators under the age of 35 and top 10 Indian innovators under the age of 35 in uh, 2018. Dr. Suri also has received prestigious awards like the IEEE EDS Early Career Award, Young Scientist Award, Young Indigenous Award and Loria Dupree, among many others. He has filed several patents, authored 75 plus publications, delivered 60 plus invited talks, and led 10 plus sponsored research projects and consultancies as principal investigator. He is also the founder of IIT Delhi deep tech startup Siren AI Solutions and also serves as an advisor to the AI NVM hardware companies and governments. Thank you for joining us for the webinar, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Bhatia. I look forward to connecting with uh, all the attendees. We're looking forward to as well, sir. And finally, I'd like every I'd like you to introduce you to Mr. Pankaj Verma. Mr. Verma is an engineer and entrepreneur and is a graduate from one of India's most prestigious engineering colleges, the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. He co-founded STEMpedia with two of his batchmates during their college days and is currently the chief technology officer of the startup. STEMpedia is a startup that aims to transform today's youth into tomorrow's innovators by enabling learning by doing in STEM education with the help of state-of-the-art hands-on project-making kits, programming software, a variety of learning options and training programs. It blends theory with experiential learning, which helps in developing innovativeness and problem-solving skills, some of the must-have 21st century skills. Uh, thank you for joining us, Pankaj. Uh, thank you, Bani. Uh, thank you for uh, the great, uh, great introduction. Uh, yeah, hey, thank you for this uh, webinar. Okay, so before we begin our panel discussion, I'd like to quickly thank all our sponsors for Kodeva, uh, Muteja, uh, Mutwani Jadeja Foundation from the US, Talent Republic from Mexico, STEM.org from the US, Lilligo from China, Center of Digital Technology 
LBCM, as the Fire Toys, JNC PCB, Community Partners, India STEM Alliance, Shiro's, Play to Transform, our business partners and academic partners for helping us make Codeva 2020 AI possible and motivating thousands of students across the globe to bring out the maker inside them and participate in this competition. So now let's get on with our discussion. Uh, so my first question is for you, Dr. Suri. Uh, these days we hear a lot about artificial intelligence, coding, robotics, etc how these are changing the world as we know it and as we live in and how it is important to you know have knowledge about them and be a bit proficient in them i'd like to ask you why is learning artificial intelligence and coding important especially in today's world sure so uh, you know before i specifically uh, take note to your question i would just like to congratulate my uh, fellow panelists uh, that is uh, uh, Mr. Budhishkar and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Pankaj, because uh, uh, I, I really uh, appreciate the missions that they are leading, very profound missions they are leading, and especially Mr. Pankaj for indigenization of a state of the art technology uh, or our te uh, technical resources, and Mr. Budhishkar for uh, you know, empowering our group to do all the uh, skill related programs, the uh, AI modules, and so on. Uh, so congratulations to both of you. It's great to be. It's great to share this space uh, with both of you, and uh, you know, keep up the good work. Uh, now, to, coming back to your uh, specific question on uh, AI, you see, uh, you know, keeping all the hype aside, uh, we see AI as the logical progression of computing. Uh, you know, there there was a state. There we, we were in an age where where machines uh, or equipment needed a lot of hand holding, a lot of instructions. Uh, to do anything meaningful and then we moved into the age or the era of uh, rule-based programming very specific uh, rule-based programming or uh, very instruction driven interaction with people now ai is the next logical progression of that uh, we are where we are expecting more out of machines or more out of our interaction with machines so more experiential we show data to machines and we expect Expect that just by uh, you know looking at data, they would start doing something more meaningful, and they would also be able to handle situations uh, which are more new. Okay, so uh, so AI in most most simple terms, the way we look at it is the logical progression of human machine interaction or human computer uh, human compute uh, interaction. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that it's something uh, which cannot be escaped. As our expectations with technology and machines increase with time, it is bound to happen. And our machines are supposed to become more and more intelligent. So thus, uh, it is a very essential skill. It's a very essential component. Uh, and we are entering that age. So the earlier we start introducing or nudging kids or young students towards uh, this domain, uh, the better it will be for them, both in terms of their future prospects, as well as uh, whatever uh, the opportunities that it opens for them. Okay, okay, yeah, I agree. Anything I, I, that you like to this? Query, right? So, Sorry? It, it, it answers some part of your question, right? That why, why AI? Yeah, right, right. yeah, true. Anything you'd like to add to this, Dr. Yadav? Mr. Yadav, yeah. I'm sorry? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, I think if, from my perspective, if you divide the audience we have, I'm sorry, you're not audible. I think you are on mute. Yeah, on mute. Yeah. So if, I, if you if you if you uh, understand my perspective broadly, you will see most of us and the students who are in schools today will either become producer of technology or consumer of technology. Right. Both the cases, until unless you really understand the basics of this tech, you can't really make an efficient engagement with it. And right. True. That I think it's imperative for all of us. It's not only for students. Some of people who work in business, I have seen them now learning technology because it helps them to be more productive. If they have to go and buy a technology solution, they can actually choose the right product which suits to their requirement. True. On top of it, if you look at the UN's sustainability goal, I think AI has 
humongous potential to actually solve some of world's problem which is being there for centuries whether it's clean water sanitization energy uh so and so forth uh so ai is there and we have seen uh, some of uh, great countries like us uh, and china you know we ahead to other countries in this journey and and what i believe is that with indian talent i think we have absolute chance to be there in the top of of those countries who are embarked on journey of ai and and on apart from coding uh, apart from ai if you if you go and and talk about coding i think it's very essential and becomes an element which just just don't teaches you programming language but it actually teaches you a purpose for which you are coding so you basically understand why you are coding which means that you understand the problem statement to the exists which you can cater to and then with the help of aspiring for coding you actually know how to think logically how to think step wise and it just enhances the way you approach and deliver solutions around you so it's important that you embark on the journey of learning ai and coding as soon as possible right true true absolutely true so right uh, adding on to this i'd like to ask my second question to both of you since both of you said that it's important for everybody or especially children to learn or understand ai and coding if they want to be efficient and if they want to live in the future so would you think that the nep 2020 that was recently announced by the government this year its emphasis on introducing ai in the curriculum and teaching coding to kids as young as 11 years old is the right move they did the right thing what are your thoughts about it dr manan would you like to go for uh on mute i think you are mute hello what do you go first I'll, dr I'll the mic on like to go first yeah am, am i audible now yeah. absolutely yeah so so yeah what i was saying is that yeah you are always... audible now yeah anyway so what i was saying is that there is always this debate that when is the right time to start and uh, i i think if if advanced content right. if it comes uh, in a fun and interactive way if it doesn't become an uh, evaluation burden on on the kids or on young students then there is no harm uh, if, uh, in introducing it even at an early uh, stage uh, now another interesting thing with a topic like ai is that ai is highly interdisciplinary you know if, if you want to be a developer or if you want to have a good thorough understanding or even a con uh, consumer of ai uh, you need to have Uh, good basics in mathematics, uh, in basic computer science. Uh, so uh, there are both ways to look at it. If you expose the students to an advanced topic, they uh, they see uh, good application uh, fundamental topics which otherwise may seem boring. So I certainly agree that it's totally fine to introduce an advanced topic at an early age. Uh, but uh, it's Uh, one can always balance that whether you want to really evaluate or really mark or grade the students, you can always reduce the pressure and uh, introduce advanced concepts in a more fun and interactive way. So, sure, and I'll continue from what Dr. Manan has just said that uh, you no, know, it's inter. Sure, sir. Uh, you know, the amazing part of this technology training in school is when we were in schools. If someone has told me what you have to do in Bodomos while you have to solve an equation, I never could guess how do I apply it. I think technology training is actually helping you understand what you have learned in science, arts, uh, stats. How do they apply in solving real world challenge? That's one. Second, I think I really appreciate the headway which NIP has made. I think uh, as a policy. it has become torch bearer and made a way for schools to accommodate technology training but as the the beauty lies in implementation i don't i don't really see uh, or i i actually recommend all the schools not to actually put technology training as add on but 
has to be a compulsory subject in schools now. And as someone said, the earlier you catch them, the better it will be. I think their learning appetite is much better than all of us. And then it's the right time to use any tech training as young as possible. True, sir. Anything you'd like to add to this, Pankaj? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I uh, I want to add some things here. So, like, uh, as we already know, uh, technology is growing very fast. So, if we say in, uh, like, early 90s or uh, at that time, the pace was there. But when we came into, like, 20, uh, like 2000, uh, the period from 2000 to 2010, a lot of technology increased rapidly. So if we see uh, a lot of things uh, started coming up, like robotics, uh, it started growing. Then uh, then we uh, came on to the part where we uh, had coding, getting into the curriculum, uh, getting popularized. And now what is happening is we are moving on and we are going to the new technology, uh, which is artificial intelligence, which has grown a lot in last few, uh, I, I, I must say like, last 10 years has been very, very, uh, like it's like exponential growth of artificial intelligence in terms of uh, the technology and also in terms of uh, simplifying those technologies so that everyone can be, uh, would be able to use it in order to make their artificial intelligence as well. So like uh, earlier, if, if I say uh, five years or 10, uh, like 10 years ago, uh, doing AI based uh, like applications and those things were very difficult and now it has become very easy. So introducing like uh, the new NEP that has come, what it has done is uh, like since the technology is becoming uh, like AI technology is becoming simple and uh, easy to access for students. So uh, introducing these things as a extracurricular activities uh, is a great thing uh, for the students where they they don't have the burden of an evaluation but they are able to increase their uh, like uh, what i would say is understanding about the technology they they can gel up very easily with uh, okay uh, like they can gel up very easily with uh, the programming concepts the logical reasoning that involves mathematics that involves a lot of uh, like uh, their like a lot of uh, mathematics is involved in coding and this thing and with this they can uh, like make their understand uh, like uh, uh, like curriculum like they can do better in their exams uh, like not in exams but uh, in understanding and solving problems as well so i think that is uh, like uh, adding right. at this early stage uh, is uh, i guess uh, okay for a lot of students uh, and uh, it's a great step by our government that they have uh, like understood the need of uh, programming and coding uh, at the early stage so that they can learn these things very quickly and get adapt to it. So adaptability is also a very important thing that students have to build. And at early stage, they are very adaptable. So after after the stage, it becomes like uh, they are doing things uh, which they love. So if, if we introduce something that they can love it at early stage, then uh, it would be very good for them to uh like uh, get uh, like get adaptive to it as well yeah yeah okay so all of us agree that NEP 2020 uh, the introduction of ai and implementing coding or teaching coding to kids as early as 11 years old is a good move by the government and we all know NEP is not only isn't the only thing that the government has done to you know push ai and coding for our young kids there are also many other missions or initiatives like you could say the atal innovation mission the uh, the introduction of atl labs by the atal innovation mission the new cbic curriculum etc to prepare children for an ai future do you think that these missions and the current efforts that the government or the other organizations that are putting into the you know world and by the various initiatives and programs do you think the efforts in the current time are enough to prepare children for an ai future and do you think they are enough to make them at par with the rest of it if we talk about indian children or indian schools do you think the efforts are at par 
so i will take like to go first, first. Okay. i will take that first sure, i think country like india sure, sir. is such a no huge scale required effort is not going to be enough at any moment of time uh, having said that to start makes a lot of difference and i know a couple of great people like dr manan is on the today who contributed and helped cbsc design think through well when they plan to actually put recommendation of what you should teach when you start ai curriculum in schools plus i think the way the industry has stepped up cbsc has got some of the the you know, content from some of the best of industry like intel ibm etc whereas if you look at atl i think the whole objective of atl is to fuel innovation and uh, right. a, a problem statement was how do you actually make this you know, learning journey of new tech more fun and and right. it absolutely light, light on on tool and really heavy on hands on and practical the best part was that the entire ecosystem came together there was there are companies like microsoft amazon uh uh sap all of them came and they like like that we i have about 12 15 companies as part of nascom who came i have people like dr manan suri from iit delhi i have professor shridhar here from iit bombay mentoring us in terms of when you when you train on technology what you what you actually should keep in mind in terms of pedagogical aspects that and then government actually fueling up and ensuring that this goes to as many as schools as possible was a great move and i think there's there's few more things which we have to do the content was released in english and i think to indian context and to achieve the scale of uh, the next planning is to ensure if we can transform and i will not say transform it to transliterate the i mean in, i will we'll just transform the content the context of local languages so that the scale of implementation can be achieved and i'm right. very hopeful i think we have done and i be the early movers if i if i benchmark of what we have done with other countries and initiatives like triple ai etc and some of advanced and developed countries like us uk us we have it right. pretty early and we are at right time now it's matter how quick we can scale it and i think with the help of industry academia and government coming together we can scale it very easily right. anything you'd like to add to this dr suri yeah sure uh, you know all these initiatives whether it is the ntl or the nep or the cbsc initiative or even the nascom future skills uh these all these initiatives coming together at such a uh, closely spaced regional uh this is a very positive and good move so uh these these initiatives are sort of laying the platform or the backbone for you know really upping the uh, youth and uh unleashing a culture of innovation in this way now right. uh, to take it further what we have to ensure is that uh, grassroots participation happens and that consistently happens so the government and other bodies uh, like nascom and atl have done good job by laying out these initiatives now more and more active participation of real students and innovators has to happen and uh, i mean more platform has to be given to local innovators or young young innovators let's say or students to to showcase whatever uh, they do with this with this backbone in place so mm -hmm. uh, and i just wanted to add in 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 our initiative when we did as nascom uh tayo etl thank you to stempin the startup like you who are home group actually can help us understand what happens in school on ground and that to the variety of school is so much you have school which is a state board affiliated gujarati medium marathi medium school who works into different way compared to any cbs english medium to an igsc to an ib board i mean you guys help us understand how well this can be structured and positioned and have that good place in the ecosystem of school thank you for that thank you sir thank you sir so right um the efforts are good but it can never be enough and we must keep pushing forward right 
my next question is for all three of you uh, we have established that learning ai and coding is important for everybody and especially our kids in this age but still many people are worried that these may be heavy concepts for our younger children and that these days due to the pandemic their screen time has increased too, too much due to additional learning because up until now all of these uh, classes they are more or less extracurricular activities what suggestions do you have for such students and for such parents what would you like to tell them how can they strike a balance between these two and how could how do you you know encourage them to not give up on learning ai and coding just because it's an extracurricular activity how do you uh, suggest them to strike a balance Mr. Yadav? This, this debate will go on uh, and this this will never end. Uh, however, to me, what exciting is uh, while you can learn uh, online, a lot of stuff, consume videos, when it comes to coding, the learning is not one way, it is two way and this engagement happens. So you do something, you right. do you output going there, you do your corrective measures. And I think as a parent of four-year-old uh, 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 young kid uh, in a limited time if allowed I do give him puzzles etc which he solves because I, I know that you know with the help of it he understands stepwise thinking he he actually calculates in his mind in back of his mind to give an input to device and when he when he actually sees the, the, the inputs going in the right direction, it helps them to be happy as well and he gets acknowledgement of what he has learned. His outcome of learning gets validated immediately. So it's exciting and of course, I think every parent knows how to balance it out uh, and put restrictions and I leave it to them to do, but I will never discourage students not to do code because of this. I'll encourage them to code as early as possible. Concepts are not heavy. Concept could be as easy as, and I'll tell you a real life example. The other day, I was helping my kid to to basically put categories of clothes in certain shelves. What it does, it just does you help understand basic concept of folders. Okay. How you actually put certain files in certain folder? Because when you want to retrieve them, it's so easy to know that which file is residing in which folder. All video file here, all text file here. So, right. figure out how you actually do some of these you know, real world situation and help them understand some of computing concepts and then probably allow them to use devices to, to play and enjoy and have more learning. Right. True, sir. Anything that you'd like to add, Dr. Suri? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, as, as uh, Mr. Yudhishir also mentioned, that this debate will keep on going that how much of advanced topics and fundamentals. So, a simple way is that, you know, good time planning and uh, it all depends how we enforce the evaluation or how strict we make the evaluation. So, uh, in other words, these advanced topics should be taken more in a fun spirit and uh, the young students should be gently nudged towards They should be first exposed uh, even to the potential of such technology or, or such topics. And everything may not be made as evaluation uh, strict or as evaluation heavy as we have in the typical schooling system. Some things or some knowledge components can be there just for the sake of acquiring knowledge and not necessarily, you know, uh, getting evaluated or getting graded or uh, ranked in that. Right. Those can be some easy ways to, uh, you know, enjoy more content that is coming your way. So. Right. Pankaj, anything you'd like to add? You're not audible, Pankaj. Uh, can you hear me? Can yeah, now you me? can hear you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, so I also want to add something in this. So, like, uh, I, while I was like uh like i i would just tell you about my story so like uh when i was in uh my 10th uh, before 10th uh, I, if i see uh how i was more uh like into my school was i was into more of a sports and studies 
Okay. So it was like a sports was an extracurricular activity for me which I loved. Okay, I love playing cricket. I've done do uh, do uh, like I have some times uh, for that uh, and then I have time for studies. So I was managing like that. Now uh, in 11th and 12th because I was preparing for uh, like IIT and those part. So at that time okay. pri my priority changed. Okay, I started like uh, and a, a lot of students start looking at that okay i have to prepare something uh, for uh, for exam and i want to prepare for it okay and if i go after iit when i got into iit kanpur then my priorities changed uh, again okay i uh, like i loved taking part in extracurricular activities i participated again in cricket i also participated in lot of uh, like uh, clubs in uh, in uh, in uh, iit kanpur and those and those things actually helped me develop uh, an interest plus develop my uh, like uh, develop my career as well because i was able to in, uh, i was very adaptive i was able to in, uh, like uh, involve extracurricular activities into my uh, regular things regular studies uh, it becomes very adapt uh, you become very adaptive okay and uh, if i see uh, like nowadays parents think a lot in terms of uh, getting results out of any course okay they they as like uh, suri sir said is like they 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 usually what see is any activity their student is doing they want them to excel in that activity okay they they want good result uh, anyhow okay but uh, it uh, a lot of as a interest to the student as well and uh, a lot of things come that okay uh, if uh, like if the student is getting interested in these kind of activities so you you can take that a lot of students are interested in sports a lot of students are interested in music a lot of students get interest in arts okay dance okay they get interest and then they do those things activities but an exposure to that thing is very much required so in uh, an exposure to extracurricular activities like learning coding and learning artificial intelligence is what uh, i think uh, parents should give the students an opportunity and if they see that the kid is very uh, excelling uh, in that thing then they can continue with those activities and uh, give chance to uh, to uh, or exposure to the kid uh, can be a uh, like can be a game changer for him as well because like in this thing they learn a lot and uh, it uh, helps them a lot in terms of uh, choosing what uh, they want to do uh, like uh, what they want to do actually okay so uh, and yeah definitely nowadays kids are tech savvy they understand how to use smartphone very well uh, they understand how to use computer so uh, maybe we can use those opportunities so, and uh, like uh, okay. a more active contributor instead of a passive consumer like just consuming content is right. not thing we want to yeah. want yeah, right. actively participate in that as well so i think uh, balance should be there but uh, at least for a start we should uh, we are like parents should give them an opportunity to uh, like uh, get them involved in these kind of activities mm -hmm. right right absolutely true Okay, so my next question is for you, Doctor Suri. I'd like to ask you, how can or how do competitions, online competitions that are running these days a lot, how do competitions like Codever, especially twenty twenty AI, help kids in their endeavor to learn these latest technologies? How are they beneficial for them? Yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, any such event or competition again act like a platform. Uh, and it acts like a small milestone in your journey of learning you know any competition or any uh, challenge or hackathon uh, should always be taken as a milestone so let's say if you are pursuing a new topic or any advanced topic uh, there it, it it might so happen that it might just become open ended you may not have a, a deadline or an objective so right. it should be taken as milestone to uh, you know focus your effort or focus your learning a little bit then again the point is that uh, these things are also to be enjoyed you know, we just talk about how uh, too much content or new advanced content shouldn't become a burden for the student so we have to shift from that culture of uh, taking education and learning 
as an evaluation centric model to a more enjoyment kind of uh, right. any sort of thing that you learn any skill that you pick up ultimately it's it costs an investment in yourself right uh, so all these events should be taken with that spirit and they're very helpful in that spirit and they also help you develop other soft skills like teamwork or uh, you know quick thinking or uh, work, working in team so uh, they should be taken as soft milestones in your journey of learning right uh your thoughts about this mr yadav anything that you'd like to add so well, i think doctor aman has covered it very well and there is always a correlation of what happens in other uh, uh other areas example sports we all train for a time personally and so we are soft playing basketball there's a time right. when, and the time comes when you have to compete with other teams when when you actually right. have competition you ensure that you gel around with your team you collaborate with more folks you prepare for it you have full post to achieve etc etc it just it just encourages you to do things pick up quick milestones see a you know journey ending it in some time and it right. so that's it right right absolutely true so i'd like to come back to you mr yadav when ask you my next question um while in one place we are talking about you know empowering our students with ai and coding in the other place there are still a huge percentage of students who do not even have access to basic education how do we you know include them in our mission as well how can we empower them and how can these technologies be used to empower them and to you know bring them at par with other students how can ai and technology be given to these students how do we reach them very if we if we consider how do we help them learn this uh, we can go little we can go we can do actually double click on that topic one as i said that it's very important that how do you simplify it for them to learn and right you can't really expect all of them and we, we all know absolutely you know, god bloom right we don't expect everyone to actually create something at least if you start yeah, absolutely with helping them go at least one to three level of bloom which is understand remember evaluate etc uh, it will be a good start so so right. Putting them into local languages will help. Second, as I said, that not every concept of computing which you will use in also devising AI solutions, you need you don't need device for everything. Concepts like category concept, there are a lot of other things you can actually learn without machine. Where you can apply while you start learning real code. Right. So you can start exposure of those basic concepts. as early as possible in this in this area where there's no machine and we believe that as india grows and we are going to going to grow really well i hope that every house will have some sort of machine the good part is india has already moved from uh fixed devices to mobile devices right this is has great great reach in the households today i right. think the right connectivity i I strongly believe that you know with right connectivity, simulation and atmosphere can be given, and and it can be localized for being this group to be included. We right. don't have good solutions as of now, but efforts of organizations like Stempedia, who takes those you know, schools, who's not only Ahmedabad, but they go into in far interiors of Modassa, etc., and get schools who are in two different languages where they right. don't have a science teacher, but they have at least you to help them start their journey that right. i believe is how it will go right 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 absolutely so true i want to add here something so, yeah sure pankaj yeah so uh when we are like uh, talking about uh, like uh, getting this to a larger audience when uh, as like previously uh, like uh, here uh, like uh, they have uh, covered it uh, language translation and those things are very much required in order to reach to those like i would say uh, uh students who are not very uh, like comfortable with english language so uh, right. a lot of uh, like what happens is uh, like a lot of uh, content generators uh, or like people who are generating content are 
major focus their main focus is on english because yeah definitely english is a one major language which is uh, taught to almost most of the students but uh, we have to focus on to think while and do uh, things as well not only in india but also abroad as well like if we say like their mother language or the language that they usually uh, use is very much important that uh, we uh, like make uh, things for uh, in their mother languages as well so that it becomes very easy for them to understand and learn so uh, with that uh, like uh, in order to uh, like we uh, as uh, we already know like stempedia with this uh, programming software we have create uh, what we have created we have tried to uh, like uh, like we are going going into the the phase where we are translating the software into different languages we have already have a lot of uh, like indian languages like kannad uh, telugu and uh, gujarati hindi and vector block so that uh, students can start learning about these things very easily and we are also integrating uh, like uh, language in other countries as well like uh, arabic is there and those parts we are adding on to vector blocks as well and now what we are uh, like uh, and with uh, like uh, with the help of uh, government with help of uh, other like uh, uh, like people or companies like nascom who who are who are very active in this areas uh, in in this area to popularize uh, these things to students uh, like the uh, artificial intelligence module the step up module that uh, atal tinkering lab uh, uh, like uh, uh, like got into the uh, like uh, like uh, the book was published so the those things uh, uh, i think now what uh, what uh, like the next step of the focus should be is in uh, getting to those people who are uh, not in the like uh, who are not able to access these things very easily or they're not able to understand those things very easily we, we have to come up with uh, uh, with solutions which right. using which right. absolutely uh, like which we can uh, yeah using which we can solve the uh, problem yeah bani yeah right absolutely true so uh, moving on uh, here's one for all three of you uh, what advice would you give to the parents and teachers you know to make their children ready ai ready for the future do you have any advice for them we follow dr manan here <laughs> <laughs> dr suri would you like to go first then i mean uh, first of all don't uh, treat it as a new subject with stress uh, don't please don't make it a grade oriented activity and uh, i mean it, it it would be very beneficial if some you know if students can be shown some links uh, between the fundamentals that they are supposed to learn in school and uh, the, the same fundamentals which act as the basis of these advanced topics like as we discussed ai is interdisciplinary it has math inside it uh, it has programming computer science and if you go more into it you will even find physics inside it right so, uh, all these things are tied together so if the students are able to see the link uh, and uh, then they'll be able to appreciate it more so yeah anything you like to add to this mr yadav i'll go last this time i'll let pankaj okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I what uh, like one there is one thing that I want to say that uh, um, as like Suri uh, sir has said uh, like definitely it's like uh, and uh, it's, uh, like we we don't want the students to feel like this is a regular uh, a different kind of uh, like the same subject that they are having mathematics or those right. things. So what I uh, like uh, if if the students or if the teachers are going with an hands on approach or practical learning type of approach with the students where they are debating with the students that how ai uh, how is ai working or how the applications are working and if they can get an hands on experience on those things then it will be very helpful for the students to understand these kind of concepts very easily because theory is aside what we uh, uh, we want to get their hands dirty so like in those practical things uh, if if uh, like teachers can have more practical things uh, when they are teaching these kind of concepts it would be very much easy for the students to understand and right. they they would get uh, interested as well right right 
Right. So to answer your question, if 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 parents have to participate in this, I see that there are two ways in which they can contribute. I will I will I'm not even questioning whether they should allow or do not allow, etc. I am going with faith that they will contribute in this mission. And the first way is that help your student pick up community and social problems. If they are at all working on projects on okay. new tech, you know, create something at this stage when they don't want to launch a commercial solution, at least can they solve a problem in your surrounding? This will help immensely. And you never know which student will hit a billion dollar idea, which will go on that journey, which will create employment right. and you know, kind of get the name of that city from where he comes and make his family proud. That's one. Right. Second, the most, the most important thing for any student to teach, which is not dependent on whether you know technology or not, is ethics. We don't right. want the AI coders, the digital uh, 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 talent of India to be just digital talent. It have to be ethical digital talent. I have to be an ethical coder. I have to be an ethical AI champion. I think as parent, if we can, if we can put the foundation of ethics in our kids, I believe they will apply those foundation of ethics when they develop application, they will understand the implication of solutions they will develop on society and at large on world. And that will help immensely. And that's where, as a parent, you can come and contribute. Right, true, absolutely. And the last one for this evening, which again is for all three of you, what advice would you give to students to make the most of their time today and the most of the competition? to learn AI and coding. What advice would you like to give to them, our young minds? This time, would you like to go first, Mr. Yadav? I think it's pretty clear. If you go uh, on the website, it just tells you step-by-step uh, step what all you have to do. Uh, there's an amazing uh, uh, you know, help provided by Stempedia, uh, allowing you to use their picture block, which is a low floor entry. Uh, a, a block based programming language. Uh, you can see immediately what you code, effect of it, quickly change it, play with it, etc. etc. Uh, you know, try to do a lot of hands on on it, I think, and, and you won't believe. You know, and I, I know that Picto Block uh, has built a concept of Scratch, and I, I myself, not being from, though I have a composition engineer, but I was not in. in, in, in taste of doing coding for about a couple of years. But when I started using Scratch, I, I created a couple of games which were quite exciting, which I used with my kids to play. And it was like, good, you actually use something which you have created all by yourself. It right. gives a different level of kick and enthusiasm in you. Just blocks or to, to, to build your solution and take 100% advantage of all the webinars they are conducting. There will be good line of speakers on coming webinars. Hear from them. You will find something interesting and valuable for you. Don't miss it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Swari, would you like to add to this? Yeah, I mean, uh, most of the points are the same that I've touched before. That Again, take this in the uh, right spirit. Uh, that's, that's very important. Uh, yeah. It's a playful spirit, a learning spirit. And uh, Divide your time if you feel too uh, too much overloaded with content. Prioritize and and then divide your time. So that's that's in a nutshell. Right. Like to suggest. Yeah. Yeah. So. Any concluding words, Pankaj? Yeah. From my side, I would say uh, you should have your enthusiasm uh, at very high at all the time. So like uh, whenever you are learning, you, you should have the enthusiasm very high. You should be keen in le learning. And uh, the uh, one more thing is there that I want to uh, add is when you go into the coding journey or the uh, AI journey, then there would be some setbacks uh, when you are doing programming. Okay, then don't treat those setbacks at the uh, in a wrong way. What you should do is like uh, you should understand why those things are coming on 
and then try to solve it and or like consult with others that how they would solve it okay so the perspective of uh, like uh, getting over the uh, over those setbacks would be very much important don't get uh, upset with it but get motivated that there is something i want to learn more okay i have to learn more and that is very important when you come to uh, in this thing so as like they have said like practicing is very much important okay so if you keep practicing it then you will get expert into it as well okay so that that's right. the thing that i want to do on well, stage right. i just want to add an interesting fact when we used to code we sure. used to run the compiler quickly <laughs> and a lot of time we see the only the 10 uh, lines of code is correct rest, and rest has flaws <laughs> setback will help you know the fact that you want to improve for sure I mean, at least you know where all you have arrived. At least setback is not way back; it's actually way forward. Just way forward, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rightly said, sir. So, with this, we have come to the end of our discussion. It was pretty enlightening. And if anybody in the audience has any questions for the panelists, we'll. spare the next 5 minutes and anybody can ask their questions in the comment section if they have to the panelists so uh i was seeing the chat and uh maybe like this we have already covered but uh uh yeah so we can like answer is is it ai integrated with mathematics subject like we have already covered that but yeah it seems our discussion has been has cleared everybody's concerns that nobody has any questions now yeah mr yeah, sudhi you were answering that question yeah i mean absolutely right so i mean ai is deeply connected to mathematics and once you get inside yeah. once you try to interpret it or even if you try to develop or solve it uh, the means to do that might be programming but the basis behind it is mathematics So right it is it is very strongly linked to so, so several mathematical concepts that you study you know matrices or probability uh, or reasoning and, and so on so it, it's very strongly connected to mathematics to answer that question. yeah yeah right i i can also attempt it uh, we are not good at teaching but yeah if you if you look at human brains and if the concept of maths is clear to a brain you can see that person calculating and coming up with coming up with uh, no calculations as it's it's much faster than anyone else and some of calculation remains back in his brain and he can does predictions as well of what will happen next like that machines will use data and this all the concept of math and science to predict to analyze to calculate etc it is the base and stronger your concepts are in these base better you'll be able to design the solution yeah right right Okay, so we have a question from uh, someone in the audience named Vinod. Uh, they're asking, "Can teachers lose their jobs? Will AI replace teachers?" Doctor Suri, would you like to answer this question? Doctor Suri is a teacher forever, I'm sure. Exactly. I, I I think if that happens, then I can keep coming to such seminars, and at least uh, I'll get some form of job, you know, talking about AI. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as as we progress as a civilization, you know, everyone needs to upgrade themselves, whether it is students or teachers. So uh, the, the answer lies in constant upgradation. So we need to keep upgrading ourselves. We need to keep picking up uh, new basics, new topics. So. The answer is it depends on the teacher. Okay. I think okay. it will not. Uh, the question is not whether man or machine. I think the answer is man plus machine. Uh, I don't see a teacher getting replaced, but I think a teacher gonna get empowered immensely with this, with these new tech like AI. All you need is the mantra which Dr. Manan has just shared. try to upgrade simultaneously as the students are so that they feel that you as relevant as they feel the machine is yeah and also uh from my perspective like yeah. uh, uh i think 
here uh, the definitely teachers uh, would have to develop new skills in terms of uh, like previously they they weren't using uh, computers or uh, those things uh, in their life okay but they started using it they started using like uh, during this pandemic they have started using zoom or like most of the students are uh, like teachers uses zoom they they are getting away with the technology but uh, if i say a connection that is uh, a connection between a teacher and a student is very very pure okay it's like uh, it's very unique okay the things that a teacher can make the student understand the the technique that they use is 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 something which is very un uh, like which varies and which is which is i think like uh, cannot be replaced or uh, replaced for a larger audience it can it can happen for a few uh, students that they are learning with ai and uh, like uh, as a teacher whole teacher but not all students will be able to adapt to it so i think the teachers are very safe but they have to adapt to this new the, the new technologies they have to upgrade themselves in terms of uh, digital literacy because uh, eventually world is going to going into a digital era and we are already in digital era but now it's uh, going more deeper into it so adapting to those things is important i think right so we'll just take one last quick question uh, someone from the audience is asking uh, do you think uh, these graphical programming platforms like pictoblocks are suitable for teaching ai the basics of ai as most of the competitions are hidden behind the graphic layer pankaj would you like to answer that okay so uh, if i say like uh, not all students are like uh, equal okay some students are very adaptive they they can understand synt uh, like syntax based pro uh, syntax based programming very easily but as uh, like uh, like uh, before going on and learning in programming what what they should be more comfortable is the concept of programming or the different concepts that are used in programming which are like uh, conditional like condition based programming where they have to like uh, based on a condition they have to solve a problem or those kind of thing so this graphical based programming language much more focused on uh, like uh, building up the concepts building up the logics building up uh, and and getting to focus them more on uh, more on the like uh, end result rather than debugging it okay so right. uh, like uh, with picto blocks what we have done is, like uh, is like if the program is not running then you have to check your concepts you don't have to check your technical errors okay so it goes into the per, into the like a situation where you are much more focusing on getting this the things done uh getting the logic uh like uh, solving the things with logics and understanding the logic and later using those concepts what you like uh logic is the main thing programming language is the secondary thing okay you can see you you can find same logic in all the programming language it's just that the way they uh, you implement that uh, implement those things changes so it's very important for you to understand the concepts and then uh, like uh, and then adapt to it then uh, get used to it and then it's like you can use that same concept in python you can use same concept in c or, or any other language yeah right right Okay, so we are already running short on time, so we'll end our Q and A session here and move on. Uh, as I told all of you at the beginning of this webinar, Kudeva 2020 AI. This webinar series is a part of this competition, this international AI encoding competition for kids. Now, let's quickly take a look about what uh, into what Kudeva is about. Uh, can we have the video, please? Yeah, yeah. Introducing Codeva 2020 AI. We can uh, this keep year's all, all of us international in the AI and coding Introducing for kids. The aim is to make the world a better place by solving real world problems using AI and coding based on the following themes. Beat the pandemic with AI. Think automation. AI and coding for the win. 
entangling transport systems. And the 2020 Space Odyssey. Anyone 7 years old and above can participate in one of these age groups. Yes, you can either participate as a one-person army or in a team of two. Anything, you can create your own story, game, software-based AI project or a hardware-based project. In Pictoblocks, it is an interactive AI education and coding platform. You can learn to code, make interactive animations and games. Interesting projects based on AI, program actions for robots, and much more. With the Pictoblocks app, now available on Play Store, you can even make your projects for the competition on the go. Follow these three easy steps to participate. First, go to the registration page and register yourself or your team. Once registered, the portal will take you to the learning page where you can learn AI and coding with our video tutorials and interactive tutor-led online courses. Now that you have the skills required, it's time to show the world what you have got. Choose your theme and brainstorm on your project. Then submit the project brief, Pictoblocks project file, and a video of the project on the submission page. Now all you have to do is sit back and wait for the results. The registration for Codever 2020 AI starts from 2nd October. The last date to submit your project is 20th December 2020. You can register anytime between 2nd October and 20th December. The winners of Codever 2020 AI will be announced on 10th January 2021. Participants stand a chance to win 50 plus prizes worth $6,000 in total. The winner of each age group will get an Apple iPad. Two first runner-ups in each age group will get exciting STEM education kits. Two second runner-ups in each age group will get smartwatch kits. But these are not all. There are many special category prizes too. All the winners will also receive a medal, certificate and the official Codever 2020 AI t-shirt. So, what are you waiting for? Register today. Bunny, you are on mute. Hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. With this, um, thank you so much, Mr. Yadav, Dr. Suri and Pankaj for taking time out of your extremely busy schedules and joining us for this webinar. All three of you really enlightened all of us with your knowledge and expertise and have really, you know, showed us that AI and coding are absolutely important for today's young minds to, you know, become the future leaders and innovators. A big thank you also to all the attendees as well for joining us. And we'll be back next week with another webinar with more industry experts to share their knowledge on these topics. Till then, channel your innovator, brush up your skills, and show the world what you got by participating in the biggest AI and coding competition of the year. Thank you all, and a very good night to you. Thank you. Thank you.